Hello, there's Northwest Trains, and uh, I'm back with uh, the first unboxing video of 2023. And it's this uh, Class 59 diesel electric locomotive, um, part of my Christmas haul. Uh, managed to just so far again, and I was partly because I <laughs> went buying it. Uh, I had a look at it in the shop at Carnforth Models and left the instructions behind, stupidly. But um, Mike sent me the pictures um, of the instructions, so I just jotted a few of the important things down. So I thought I can't hang on any longer. I want to see uh, the loco running. Right, so that's the model I've got DB Schenker, John F. Yeoman. And it comes with DCC fitted and uh, a working smoke unit, supposedly for diesel fumes. And also worth mentioning, um, with the trouble I had with the Manor class last time, this one actually supposedly works on radius 1 curves. So 14, just over 14 inches radius. So um, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Uh, you can see that bright red livery there. Well, to really class it as red or orange, I'd say it was like a bright red. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to get this out of the box now and uh, we'll sort of rearrange the camera in a sec but let's just take a look at what we got first uh, I've got to say it's really heavy I, I definitely notice the difference that it feels heavier than the Backman 66 but whether it is or not uh, we'll soon find out a bit of a challenge getting out of the box because those uh, Smoke care uh, oils sort of wedged in. Right. I did you know glancing at the instructions. I did think it was very strange. So we got two different smoke fluids here. I thought it was one on one part of the engine and one on another, but apparently so you got one here that's low over the smoke oil. Um and we've got ready to use smoke oil. So um well so both for all smoke generators. Um so this one's for dapple smoke generators only. So uh, I presume it's a new formula they've come up with. And this is like the, I presume, the sieve smoke fluid to use for the steam engines. But we'll try it out. I mean, the smell doesn't particularly bother me, but I'm sure it might do to other people. So we've got quite a few um, detailed parts. We've got the name plates as well. Uh, the hook coupler. Resealable bag, which is better. Uh, blank in place. I'm not sure why that doesn't come in the bag, but anyway, right, let's get it out. And uh, I'm one of these that usually once they're out the box, they never go back in the box unless there's a problem. So hopefully, there won't be. So that's to protect the wheels down there. It's been that long since I did have a little look at it. I've forgotten what came with it. Right, just it is really heavy. I've got to admit. I know the Hatton 66 was uh, supposed to be quite heavy. I never got one of them, uh, luckily, because <laughs> there was all sorts of problems, I think, with them. Um, right, I'm going to change the... In fact, before I change the angle of the camera, just have a look at it from the front. You can see it's uh, got all sorts of extra details to it. Wipers. Uh, the lights look really good. It's certainly a lot more detailed looking than the Bachman model. We suppose you got working cab lights with this and directional uh, lighting. Let me see, I presume that's with the decoder, as I can see some sort of wiring under there, but that looks really good. The X, it's all plastic. I presume that's where we dropped the smoke oil, but I'll check that in a minute. Just have a look at the underneath detail. Again, you can see a bit of the lubrication there. You can see it's got pickups and all 12 wheels. That's good. All that should be standard now anyway. See if we can pick out some of the detail there. See, so far, yeah, it's quite impressive. Um, so this side here now, we've got different ends here to allow the coupler. So this one hasn't got one, so I'll leave it off for now. Because it does look better. Um, what we'll do is I'll put it this way on the line, so that's the which way it'll be facing the wagons for this side of the track. Okay, so I'll just reposition the camera now and we'll have a look at some of the uh, features. Okay, we have the 59 on the track uh, now. Um, one reason why I did want this model was um, uh, I don't really know much about 59s. I know they've always been around and that's 
the 66 was sort of an improved version of them um, I'm not sure what they include in terms of interior but they just share the body as far as I know I know the 66s were faster and more powerful or some of them versions were um, but there was only 15 class 59s made when I looked them up um, all but one were at freight, uh, freight liner ones are of GB rail freight as far as I know um, so yeah, quite an interesting little look up really um, some of the 59s only do 60 miles an hour as well which is quite slow I presume that's why the, the class 60s weren't so popular and uh, other models done the 75 miles an hour which is what a 66 does they were built in America and they were the first privately bought locos in the country so which is uh, something I didn't know so um, and they were also built for like heavy quarry work to replace the class 56s the 56s were quite unreliable apparently and uh, they only had a 40% operational um, what's efficiency I suppose you could say so these completely changed that and improved it massively so hence the reason why they bought so many 66s after um, I suppose these were like the uh, the trial locos really when you think about it um, so anyway before we do anything I'm going to try a few drops of this smoke fluid into the generator it says four to five drops and uh, I'm useless at doing this with the steam engines but let's just try it now okay so that's one two three four I'll just try it there for now I mean anyone who's used to eye drops I'm sure it'll be a doddle so right going back to it now so we got zero directional lighting so let's just try that i was hoping to have um the sound fitted version but they haven't brought them out yet it'll be a while i think right nothing's happened as yet just nope right nothing with zero yet Let's try uh, one, which should change the direction. Oh, there you go. So let's change direction, see what happens. Oh, there you go. So there are directional lighting. So we've got F3 cab light, so that should come on this end now. Yeah, that's quite uh, bright, isn't it? Is there a driver in there? I don't think so, but I'm sure you could add one. Um, right. So we've got uh, four directional um, light markers, so not actual headlights, just lights. You can see the difference there, that's quite a nice little feature, isn't it? So let's switch back to the main lights. Okay, so five is um, daytime and nighttime, so five not on is daytime, five on is nighttime. I'm sure what difference that makes. Oh, yeah, you can see a little. You can see a little difference, can't you? So turn five off again. Yeah. So that should uh, prove interesting. The even run sessions when I do it in the dark. Um. Okay. So let's see um, about moving off then. Uh, and see if this smoke comes on. Because there's no actual... Uh, this is a disappointment for me really. There's no function for turning the smoke generator on or off. And I was always under the impression that if you didn't keep it topped up with oil all the time, uh, the gen the smoke generator would burn out or dry out. Um, I know with various other smoke generators and other scales, it's, it is the case. So that was one thing I was worried about, but I couldn't see any info on that. So if anyone else has got one of these um, and they know, please let me know. I know you can, I mean, you can remove the body and manually switch the smoke generator off. That's a faff, and you don't really want to be doing it. I don't particularly like taking locos apart if I don't have to. Um, but anyway, that, that's another point I thought was worth mentioning. But let's just uh, start it up now. So speed step one. Now you can hear that noise. That's quite loud. I presume that's for the smoke generator. So far, I've not seen any diesel exhaust fumes. So there might be another setting that I'm not seeing yet, but let's just change direction. Let's 
speed step two. Often as yes. Another feature I've just noticed, I think these are a feature in the Hattons models, is the uh, the actual axle axles or axle boxes I think they're called and moving on the model. Now, I know the Hattons ones, these are the habit of falling off when I've seen other videos of them, so it's quite a nice feature that you can see them on someone I didn't know about. We're still not seeing any smoke though. Let's just try moving it up and down a bit. I've either put too much fluid in or not enough probably. So it might just be a case of having to let the loco have a run. We've got a bit of a flickering light on the front here. Not too sure why that's the case. You can hear that noise, can't you? It goes off and on. I do wonder whether there's another setting um, that I don't know about. Again, speed step one. Speed step two. All right, I think what we'll do is just to save time. We'll send the loco around for a run. It does say in the instructions that no special running in is required. So, um, but I'll give it a couple of runs around the layout. And then, uh, we'll have a pull on some freight and see what I can pull. Right, so we've got 10 of these Freightliner um, quarry stone hopper wagons. Now these are pretty heavy metal wagons. I've got 10 of them, so it's the first uh, load test. So let's just see how it does. Speed set one. I'm hoping at some point during the running that the smoke will work, but at the moment I'm very skeptical. So that's speed set one, and um, it's quite a nice crawl really with the weight behind it. So let's just go up a bit. Speed step two, and then three, and four. So we'll get a few running shots of this, and then we'll try some different freight wagons on it. Right, I've uh, changed the uh, wagons over, and now we've got 10 of these EWS uh, 100, 100 ton um, coal hoppers. Um, slightly heavier train. Uh, I know this would be because me Backman 66s, um, you, they pull it okay, but you can tell that they are pulling a heavy load. Um, one thing that I've noticed with this model, they haven't improved the uh, couplers again. Uh, same as the 68s because I had to change the 68s to the magnetic hung couplings uh, because when they pull back from wagons uh, they tend to just pull them off the track rather than pull them along the Hornby class 60 was the same as well it's okay with Hornby wagons or sometimes even dappled wagons but back, uh, back from wagons they, they don't like like them and the couplers are so low in fact sometimes that you can even uh, feel them rubbing along the sleepers 
Um, don't know if anyone else has had this problem. Um, right, so try the smoke fluid again. I've drained it out and I put half the amount in this time. I used a syringe as well, so it could be a bit more accurate. So, fingers crossed, let's see if it works now. So, I'll just move it off slowly. Speed set one. Nothing yet. It's very hit and miss this because um, you, know, you would think if I put too much in, now I've put little in, if it's not working because there's not enough in it this time, it's not going to last very long, is it? Right, nothing at all then. Anyway, let's give this a run now and um, again, we'll just have to see if we can suss out the exhaust fumes. I hope it isn't a problem with it because I don't really want to change it. Oh, tell you what, I just saw a little tiny amount come out then. Yeah, you can just about see it. Just about. Let me just back it up a little bit. Yeah, it is working. It's very, very faint though. You can hardly see it. But it's quite strong. I can smell the fluid now as well. So hopefully the camera will pick that up. It's, um, shall we say, a novelty feature. I'm not sure it's worth paying the extra money for yet, but I thought, you know, I've got to try it. But yeah, it's working now. I think the case is you're looking right at the exhaust, you don't see it, but you look about three or four inches up, you see it more. Again, I'll have to just see what the camera picks up. Let's stop it, start again. Right. I can't see from here whether you can see it on the camera or not, but I can definitely see it. So yeah, it does work. It's just a case of, instead of four or five drops, like it says on the instruction, um, maybe try just two or three. Um, but that's just worked three or four times now, and it looks like there's plenty of smoke in it. So again, right, I'm definitely going to move the train off now. I just wanted to make the most of seeing this feature, because you can't see it when the loco's uh, got no speed on it. Okay, move it off. Right, we've had our first accident, and it was what I was saying before. It's as if the loco pulls the wagons off the track rather than along the track. Um, it started on this curve here, and as you can see, it's a very gentle curve compared to a lot of them on this layout. And um, all the other wagons are fine. It's just a connection between the loco and the wagon. It's at uh, fault. Sorry about the camera there. Um, really irritating. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to alter this to the hum couplers like I've done with the class 68 and see if that improves it so um, I'm just not sure whether these wagons are compatible that's the only thing let me just check yeah I can put a hum coupling in there so I'll do that now and see if it makes a difference and there we'll run the train round again okay I've changed the um, couplers over to hum couplings and there uh, the, hunt, uh, the hook's actually missing off this, so I've got to find that on the track somewhere. Um, so not a very good start. And also, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, you can see the light flickering away here. So the loco is set in reverse at the moment, so you shouldn't see any light in there. Uh, the driver's cab, there's a slight flicker there. So it's as if a lighting bar runs all the way through. I'm not too sure why that is the case and why it's flickering as well. Uh, let's just change the direction. So I've still got it in night mode now anyway. Um, so, I mean, that's not flickering now. And to be honest, the other side doesn't seem to be flickering. It's a strange one, really. Have we got any more diesel fumes coming out? No. But I don't think these couplers, the magnetic ones, they're not particularly attractive looking. Um, you can get closer fit ones. I bought this pack just as like a test bed really. Um, but they work normally.
Right, I thought I'd just do a little final hair running shot with the um, Class 66 sound on. I do think um, this model would benefit from the sounds, um, especially when you hear that fan noise going off because you can't hear it at all when the 66 is on. So just to give an example of what it could uh, sound like. Um, overall, I'm happy with it. Um, I just think it's a shame I spend half the video, well, be about 80 percent of the video talking away about problems <laughs> with dapple engines and um, as you can see my mana class in the background if you saw that video i managed to get it running a circuit to the upper level now without derailing it'll only run on this way round and round one certain set of points but at least it is running now without derailing um the plus side to the class 59 it's really really nicely decorated model full of detail the lights look really good, apart from that little, um, in fact we'll just stick with the positives. So the lights are really good, the finish is really good, running is very good, very smooth runner, especially, uh, slow speeds is fine. It pulls uh, pretty much the heaviest train I've got at the moment. Um, I know other people might want it to pull over 20 wagons, I've rather it pulling 10 um, with complete ease. So um, I know it will pull a lot more. Um, so the negatives are, um, I had to change the coupler to a hung coupler for the Bachman wagons. With Dapol wagons, with the Freightliner ones I had, fine, not a problem. Uh, but with Dapol, uh, Bachman wagons, um, especially around, well, it's not even around the sharp curve, but certain curves, it tends to pull the wagon off the track rather than, um, you know, work smoothly. So... That's a result of the, the coupler being too low on the uh, track, I've, in my opinion. Especially, uh, you see sometimes, like I said, it does rub along the sleepers. Um, but the hung coupling sorted there. Uh, so, if Dapol can improve up upon that, then fantastic. Uh, the smoke unit, I wouldn't particularly recommend it. It's a nice little gimmick. It's a bit of fun. Um, but it's not worth paying any extra money for. Where, where What I would like to see is you'd be able to turn it on and off using the um, controller. So a number setting without having to take the body off and turn it off manually. Um, and also the sound fitted version. I think it would be good if when the loco starts up you could have the option to have the um, diesel exhaust coming out then. So like a, you know, a cold start or something like that. That would be that would make it more of a feature i think especially for a smaller layout when locos are moving slowly but um for me it's like i said i wanted to see what it was like but it's nowhere near as effective as the steam engines i don't think um but it was a nice idea anyway um i've already talked too much again now um let me know what you think your experience with the 59s and um or dapol in general for locomotives uh, please put it in the comments. I look forward to seeing them. And uh, big thank you for watching. And uh, see you for the next video. Bye for now.